So it's the FA Cup final this weekend and uh, I was asked to write an article on the FA Cup final and rather than just trot out all of the normal stuff that people come out with I thought I'd dig around and do some uh, work on statistics if there's something interesting uh, to discover uh, which I did which I'll talk about in a second um, but if you're looking to trade on football Bet Angel is definitely the, the tool for you because it's got a dedicated profiling tool in there, Soccer Mystic, that allows you to look at the match in lots of lovely detail and uh, put forward different scenarios to give you an idea of roughly where it thinks the odds will be. And also you can connect um, spreadsheets and come up with some interesting views of the markets as well. You may have seen the other videos on those, but check out both of those features because they're of immense value to you if you're looking at trading on football. So make sure that you do that. But anyway, back to uh, the information that I was looking at. I decided to go back and analyse all of the FA Cup finals and see if I could find anything interesting within uh, all of the data that that threw off. Went all the way back to the very first FA Cup final, but obviously uh, that is completely irrelevant to the match that will be played this year. Um, so I cut the data down to the post-war period, basically from the 1940s uh, going forward. The interesting thing that I saw within that data was if you look at the average number of goals that uh, are scored in the FA Cup final, they're on a, on a decline. They're basically getting less and less and less. So you would sort of expect in a final that teams would be a little bit cautious because, of course, you're only 90 minutes away from winning the match. So the emphasis, I think, on a lot of teams in big finals is basically not to make a mistake, not to concede, and then look for an opening. But the problem is, of course, the other team is thinking exactly the same. Uh, so you end up in this sort of stalemate with uh, fewer and fewer goals. But it seems, and it was interesting to see, that the trend for this is getting stronger and stronger and stronger over time. So I grouped it into decades and then plotted the average number of goals uh, in the FA Cup final over that decade. And you can see on the graph, it's very clear that the average number of goals is declining. So basically the match is getting more and more boring as time uh, as the decades pass, basically. So that was interesting to see. But um, if you look at the data beneath that as well, um, you would sort of, if there's less and less goals in a match, then basically the average time of the first goal tends to get later and later. And that's pretty much what we found as well. So looking at the average time of the first goal, you can see that that is getting longer and longer as well. But the interesting thing about the data is when you look at when the second goal is scored, that's remained pretty stable, uh, which was quite interesting because you would expect fewer and fewer goals in a match would make the time of the first and second goal further and further away. But in fact, uh, on the FA Cup final, what you actually saw was that the time of the first goal is gradually getting longer, but the time of the second goal isn't. So that sort of indicates that when that first goal goes in, you get an immediate reaction in terms of the way that the match is played. That also sort of makes sense as well. You know, statistics are great, but only if you can actually pin something to it. It's no good coming up with a statistic and then not being able to explain uh, why that occurs. So in terms of the first statistic, saying that the average number of goals is getting smaller, you can sort of hypothesize that this would be because teams don't want to lose, and that's their main focus. They're, they're not playing an attacking brand of football. They're just waiting for an opportunity. And for the second statistic, you can sort of hypothesize and say, well, they don't want to concede a goal, but when a goal is scored, then basically the match opens up a bit, and that second goal um, it, you know, comes uh, at, a, at a regular interval thereafter. So you know, a couple of interesting statistics uh, on the FA Cup final there. That there, is, there is loads of other things, and you also must be aware that when we're talking about things as averages, you know, you could have a 4-0 one year and a 0-0 the next, and therefore on average that's 2-0. Or you could have a 3-0 and a 0-0, and therefore um, that ends up with a smaller average. So, you know, always look at averages in that respect. But, of course, whenever you're attempting to make money from markets, you need to have that long-term aspect anyway. So something that you do this year may not work, but if you know and can understand and explain a bias in the market, then as long as you do it, um, enough times then you will make money over a period of time so anyway I thought you may be interested in that I discovered these statistics when I was researching the article which will be published this weekend and um, I thought I'd uh, do a quick video on it so that you could uh, be enlightened 
on that data as well. So anyway, I hope that's of use to you. And um, I hope that the FA Cup final isn't boring and it's very exciting, but somehow I'm expecting that not to be the case. Anyway, good luck. If you're interested in learning more about BetAngel, its tools and the opportunities they present, why not visit BetAngel.com today to download a free trial.